Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today I'm talking about the new album from Blink-182 one more time. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you check them out. There's links for The Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlists we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure you check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm a huge Blink-182 fan. I have been ever since the first time I, I heard Dude Ranch. Probably late 97 was the, was the first time I heard it. Been hooked on, on them ever since then. They're definitely one of my favorite bands of all time. So when I heard they were coming out with a new album, of course I was excited to, to, to hear it and check it out. You know, I think I can also be objective when when looking at new music, especially you know, even with, with a band that I really love. Uh, you know, it, there is some stuff on this album that I'm not exactly thrilled about. So a little background on the album it was released just last week on October 20th. So it's I, I've had a week now to kind of dig through the album and listen to it a bunch of times. I, f I think I got a, a pretty good feel for it. I don't like doing reviews of albums right after they come out because I, I I like to actually sit with it and really kind of digest the music on there. But it's the blink way 2's ninth or 10th album, depending on how you how you count their studio albums. Some people count Buddha as a studio album, and some people it's just a, a demo album. It's, even though it's just, I think it's just technically a, a demo album. But uh, this is the first album with, with guitarist and founding member Tom DeLonge since they released Neighborhoods back in 2011. And this is the follow-up to their album Nine, which was released in 2019 with uh, Matt Skiba on guitar. So really what makes this album different than their last couple of albums? Obviously, you know, Tom DeLonge's back in the fold, Matt Skiba's out, uh, you know, so obviously there's a, there's a big change there. But this is the first Blink-182 album that's been produced by Travis Barker. The last two albums were produced by John Feldman. I think John does really good work. I think he did really good work on those two albums. But kind of, as much as I do like California and Nine... I feel like John Feldman had a little bit too much input on those songs, and a, a lot. Some of those songs don't really sound like Blink One Two songs. They sound more like they belong on a, you know, uh, on a Goldfinger album than a Blink One Two album. So I'm not going to go over all 17 tracks on the album. I'll definitely go through some of my favorites on here. So the album starts off with Anthem Part Three, which I think is an absolute banger. It's a great way to start off the album. It's a continuation of Anthem off of Enemy of the State and Anthem Part Two on uh, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. Between the three anthems, it's probably my least favorite, but I love the progression across those three songs. Anthem Part 3 has a lot of parts that are very familiar from, you know, Anthem and Anthem Part 2. So, like I said, a really cool way to, to start off the new album. Second track is Dance With Me. It's a very catchy song. I love the Olays. I love the music video for it also because I'm a big fan of the Ramones. So, to see them, you know, do a, a take off of the video for I Want to Be Sedated by the Ramones, I think it's really kind of really kind of cool way to, to do that video. Um, you know, like I said, just love the song. It's a really catchy track. The third track on here is Fell in Love, which is really interesting because it's a. Uh, it's not really what you would expect from, from Blink-182. It has a very strong new wave feel to it. It actually has the drum loop and the claps from a song from by, by The Cure called Close to Me, which was released on their album, Head on the Door, which is a great album. It's I think it's one of the most underrated albums by, by The Cure. Um, you know the band I'm a huge fan of, so really kind of cool to see that incorporated into that track. But uh, you know, like I said, just another great track I listen to all the time. Then you got Terrified, which is a really interesting track because it's actually a boxcar racer song. So boxcar racer is a side project or was a side project from Tom DeLonge and, and Travis Barker, early part of the 2000s. And they held on to this track and reimagined it, reused it, you know, put it all together and put it on this album. It's a great, uh, I think it's a great way to kind of connect that boxcar racer album to, to the new stuff that the band is doing. Like I said, just another great track. And then you get uh, One More Time, which I think is probably the most personal track that the band has ever recorded and, and, and released. You know, it's a song, it's an apology song to each other. It's an apology song to fans. You know, I, I think I'd probably put it as probably one of my top 15 or 20 Blink-182 tracks. It's a song, you know, I listen to pretty regularly off this album. And then, uh, you know, then we get down to, um, so you got a couple of tracks that are just kind of okay on there then. And then you got When We Were Young, which has a, a very strong Angels and Airways vibe to it. I think it's a song that uh, kind of like the Boxcar Racer song. It's a song that kind of connects this album to what Tom DeLonge was doing, you know, for so long in Angels and Airwaves. And then on the vinyl version, Edging ends side one. So Edging is a good track. I think it's probably one of the top maybe six or seven tracks on the album. 
But to be honest, I've listened to to Death over the last year. It was released in October of 2022. And maybe that's just what it is. Maybe I just listened to it way too much over the last year. To, you know, when I listen to it on CD, when I listen to it digitally, I tend to skip over that track just because I've heard it way too much. And then Side 2 starts off with You Don't Know What You've Got, a great track. The course is actually written by Travis Barker and brought to the band. And then uh, Mark Hoppus actually wrote all the verses on here. The song is about Mark's journey through cancer. And it's just a cool track to kind of go through and listen to. It's not one of my favorites on there, but I, th- I think it's still a really good track. You had a couple of tracks after that that I think are just kind of okay. And then you got Turpentine, which Turpentine is a really interesting song because the first time I listened to it, and maybe the first couple of times I listened to it, I wasn't a huge fan of that track, but it's definitely grown on me over the course of the last week. It's probably one of my favorite tracks on the album now. It's maybe number one, maybe number two. Maybe I'd drop it down to number three. Definitely up there at the very top. And it just, uh, it, it's it's a song that reminds me a lot of Neighborhoods or Dogs Eating Dogs, which was the EP that they released after uh, Neighborhoods and before Tom left the band for the second time. And it just, uh, you know, as much as I'm not a huge fan of, of Neighborhoods, it's got that strong vibe on there. I think it does a good job of connecting this album to Neighborhoods, just like some of those other tracks do to, to some other Blink albums uh, that they released before. Other Side is another one of those songs that really kind of grown on me. It's a song that is a tribute to Mark's uh, bass tech that died. And uh, knowing that before the the album was released, I really expected this to be kind of like a a darker, slower kind of song. And it's really kind of the opposite. It's actually kind of like an upbeat, kind of hopeful song. Uh, kind of like the, you know, see you on the other side kind of song. And uh, so it's kind of really surprising to see a song like that written written by Mark Hoppus. He tends to write some darker stuff. Uh, if you go back through and listen to like the Untitled album or Plus 44 has like a lot of darker tones on there. Even, uh, even Nine in California do also, which Mark was obviously heavily involved in the writing process on there. And then the album ends with Childhood, which I think is kind of a like really great laid back way to, to finish the album. And I know a lot of fans aren't really happy with the sequ- sequencing of that song on, on the album, but I think this album overall, there's a lot of high energy across this album. And then Childhood is this track to, to finish out the album. Like I said, it's definitely a laid back track, kind of way to kind of wind down that energy on the album. And it's like this look back, not only on where did their childhood go, but also like a look back in this like retrospective kind of way on their career. So in my attempt to be somewhat objective on this album, I've got a whole list of pros and cons here that I'll kind of go over, uh, you know, because I, I think it's a great album. You know, do I think it's their best album? No, it's probably not any, anywhere close to being their best album. But I don't think it's anywhere close to being their worst either. So yeah, I, I tried, like I said, tried to be somewhat objective looking at this album. So I think first off, the band is firing on, on all cylinders on this album. I think this is the most cohesive that the band has been in 20 years. And the issues I have with, with Neighborhoods, which was released in 2011, is how disjointed the, the album sounds. The band wasn't really, even though they were together... You know, they weren't really on speaking terms fully. Uh, the band recorded it in a bunch of, separately in a bunch of different locations. And like I said, it has this like disjointed sound on the album, even though I do love some of the tracks on that album. Uh, you know, I think they do a really great job of like blending all this other stuff that they've done across their career. You know, earlier in the career, they really tried to stick with that punk rock sound or pop punk sound on their first few albums. And then on take off your pants and jacket, they tried to start experimenting with some other stuff. The, uh, the, their untitled album from 2003 fully was more exper- experimental than anything they had done before. And they kind of continued that, I think with one more time while also incorporating stuff from Boxcar Racer, from Plus 44, from The Transplants, from all these other side projects and all this other stuff that they had done across their career. It's really the first album they've recorded in 20 years as a full, complete, together, genuinely friendly band. Uh, you know, it's an album that I think also kind of pulls on some of that nostalgia stuff. Like I said, callbacks to... You know, Dude Ranch and Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, Enemy of the State, Boxcar Racer, you know, all these other stuff that they've done across their career, kind of pulling little things, creates that kind of nostalgia feeling on some of these tracks. 
as far as the production on this album, I think Travis did a really good job. I think he did a better job than maybe what some other producers would have done with this album. But, you know, he, he's produced a lot of stuff over the last few years. And Travis's stuff tends to have this kind of maybe kind of hip-hop-ish kind of vibe to it. Definitely like a shinier, poppier edge to the music. And I think a lot of that was cut back on this album. I think he really relied heavily on a lot of stuff that he learned working with Jerry Finn for so many years, but also kind of incorporated this uh, modern sound to it. I really don't think this album has a skippable track on it. Like I said, I skip over edging just because I've heard it so much. Uh, you know, there are just some kind of okay songs on here. I think More Than You Know is just a kind of an okay song. Bad News, Blink Wave, uh, Fuck Face is a track that, I guess if there is a skippable track on here, it might be Fuck Face. But, you know, I think all those tracks in their own way are, you know, just kind of okay tracks to me. As far as my cons for the album, this album is a little more compressed than I really would like it to be. It just, uh, I will say that there seems to be a difference between when I listen to this on streaming compared to any physical format, whether it's CD or vinyl. The CD and vinyl versions don't sound as compressed as it does on streaming. And maybe that's just what I'm listening to it through. Maybe that's a, a difference there. But, uh, you know, so I'm not a huge fan of the compression on there. There's some also there, there's also some parts on the album that I'm not a huge fan of the way it's mixed. Some parts... I think the drums are a little bit too much out in front, which the album was produced by their drummer. So maybe it's just kind of a byproduct of of his production. And then there's other parts where I think the vocals get a little too buried in the music and some parts it's kind of hard to understand, which, you know, the thing with, with Blink-182, their songs have always been very understandable. You can hear the lyrics, you can understand the lyrics, and that's not always the case on this album. Probably my biggest issue with this album, though, is of the 17 tracks... Six of them were released as singles before the album was released. So you had, you know, a third of the album that you could listen to. So I think it really kind of robbed the anticipation for the album. Of course, I was still anticipating it. I still was happy to listen to it. But, you know, a lot of times, if I'm really anticipating an album, you know, I can't wait to stream it at midnight. And that wasn't necessarily the case with this album. I still, I mean, I, I worked till three o'clock that morning when it, when it was released. So I streamed it, you know, on my way home from work and kind of checked it out. But, you know, I didn't really have that really strong anticipation that I think I could have had, had they only released, you know, edging and maybe one or two other tracks before the album came out. And when I went through it the first time, I kind of had this feeling like I'd already listened to the album, which was insane. Like I said, uh, you know, you released a third of the album before it came out. So I guess that's kind of why I had that feeling. But, you know, I still think it's a really great album. Scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it probably a solid 8. Uh, you know, I could see this kind of growing on me a little bit more, maybe kind of making it up to an 8.5 eventually. But at least right now, I think this is a really solid 8 out of 10 album. As far as where it ranks with, with other Blink-182 albums, you know, I've seen a lot of people online talk about how they think this is the best album Blink-182 has ever released. I can't go there. I think their untitled album, Enema of the State, Take Off Your Pants and Jacket, those will always be their top three albums in some kind of order. And then the question is, where does this kind of fall after that? I, I kind of place it kind of neck and neck with Dude Ranch. I don't know if this would be number four or number five. Uh, you know, this is an album that, you know, maybe over the next couple of months or over the next year or so, you know, I get it uh, a good feel for it. Maybe it'll grow on me a little more, kind of see if it edges out uh, Dude Ranch. As for the physical form of this album, it's available on CD, it's available on cassette, it's available on vinyl. There's a bunch of vinyl variants. I've got uh, I've got a couple of them, but my favorite one is this really cool, I don't wear this from the UK, but it's a lenticular cover. As you can see, it's got a color change, where it goes, that's the standard pink and black, or black on pink, and then it's also pink on black. So that's kind of cool to, to see the, the difference on there. That's limited to 5,000 copies. I've got uh, copy number 1,000. 643 if you can see it oops yeah it's right there on the, the lower corner written in written in sharpie so nothing uh doesn't look super official but it's cool just a standard jacket just like the the standard album is you know it's got the same it's got the same gatefold inner and that's the the back cover i think it's the same back cover i guess it's a little bit different than the standard album which is the this is the standard one so you can see the difference between the the two like I said, there's a bunch of different color variants for this album. I think my favorite is that one with the, with the lenticular cover because it's got this really cool pink and black split, which I think goes perfectly with the, uh, the album artwork. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. That's my biasedly unbiased opinion of, of the new Blink-182 album. I'd love to know what you guys think. It's just uh, it's an album that, I, like I said, tried to be objective with. 
you know, there's some stuff I really love on the album. There's stuff that I'm not really super thrilled about, but uh, I think it's a really solid effort. You know, 30 years into their career, there's not a lot of other bands from that time period that are putting out great albums like this. Albums that kind of rival some of the best ones in their career. I'd love to know what you guys think, though. Uh, you know, drop me a comment down below. Let me know if you checked out the album, what you think of it. But uh, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a little thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.